Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So good news. It seems to be that the problem, like I had talked about, so let me go back. We had issues where our batteries were not charging evenly. The batteries on this side um, had higher voltage than the batteries on this side. So what that meant was this will get to a voltage where it um, got more capacity stored in it than on this side. Now what I'd uncovered when I spent some time looking through it, we added the balances hoping to fix it. And the balances every morning were coming on trying to resolve an issue that wouldn't go away. So what I discovered was our cabling were different sizes. This was a 75 mm and this was like a 25 mm and the interconnect was a, a 20 mm much thinner than what we have from the charge controllers. So what did I do? I cut new cables, so I took it from here. I cut new cables, made them the same length, using the exact same lug, and I replaced the old ones with the new batteries. With, sorry, with the new cable. So now our cables are equal length, and our interconnect is of the same size as what I have here. So everything going from the battery to the bus bar are exact same size. I also changed one of my uh, copper bus bars. I changed this one. It was copper but it was a different color. I figured that might be an issue as well but you know better safe than sorry. I replaced it so the, the bus bars are all exactly the same type, same color probably machined from the same piece. I can't say for sure, but the bottom line is they are all the same. So the first day, we didn't get, um, well, we didn't quite get the results because the first day the batteries couldn't fully charge. It wasn't very sunny. Yesterday, the batteries fully charged. I ran exact same load as I ran the night before, and I woke up with a battery voltage of 54.5 versus 49 the day before and 48 the day before that. So I think I have recovered these batteries. Today, uh, this morning by 11 a.m., our batteries have gone into absorption and to keep um, our production high because this charge controller, once it goes into float and notices that there are other charge controllers uh, sending power to it, it goes to sleep, it stops producing. So it's currently in absorption and what I did is I put an AC on to discharge the batteries or at least to pull enough energy to force it to remain in absorption for quite a while. Um, currently, as you see um, on this one, the Schneider, we have, um, sorry, input. We have 289 watts coming in and our batteries are 56 volts and 5.2 amps coming from this into the system. On the inverter itself, so we have 163 watts coming from our PV on the roof, and our batteries are 56.1, and our consumption we're pulling 28 percent out, and it's 1,350 watts is what we're pulling out of our system right now. When I go to a Victron uh, battery monitor, the battery monitor says I'm pulling 5 amps out. So that means my production is almost enough to compensate for uh, my consumption. So it's pretty much flat. As of, as of up until this moment, from last night up until today, which, you know, pumping water, which I did this morning, I filled up two tanks and then now running the ACs to discharge. To discharge we've pulled out 21.6 amp hours out of the batteries and our batteries are 72 percent. I'm not quite convinced this is correct so what will happen is if I'm around when this battery is fully charged I'll synchronize and then we start pulling from that point on. Okay so I'm going to take you in and show you a new challenge I have and hopefully you can help me solve it. Hello YouTube this is Dr. Sola so I'm back so here is my new challenge. We've been trying to char uh, charge these batteries for a while and for the first day and a half we did well and then today we decided to push um, some additional current through it and the BMS shut down. 
The reason the BMS shut down is, and we got an error message on our Schneider which I've cleared, was uh, DC over voltage. And why do we get DC over voltage? Because this particular cell exceeded the 3.65 which our BMS allows. All the others were within acceptable threshold, but this one uh, exceeded it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to plug in the AC, which was running earlier, which is this one. We're going to plug the inverter, the AC into the inverter, and use the AC to discharge the batteries. We're hoping that if we can bring them down to a low enough level, we can attempt to bol uh, bottom balance the batteries. We have a BMS, the BMS will shut it down, and we also could program it into the inverter. Once we get to that number, we are hoping that all these batteries will be uh, pretty much, um, how do you say, even in capacity. So our way to try to bottom balance is by draining and hoping that our balances would help us maintain, um, well, will help us maintain an even discharge all across the cells. Um, this has been a problem that, that we fought for almost six months, seven months now. And if anyone out there has a better way to get this done, I'm all ears. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. If you've not subscribed, please click the, sub click the subscribe button. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions, any questions, please post them below. Today we have a little intern. He's 15 years old, so he's trying to learn about what we do. Hello YouTube, Dr. Sola. Um, so this video is done over a period of two days. As you could see from our SCP system control panel, it says the battery is full, it's at 26.5. And here are our LIFPO for batteries that we've struggled with. Um, yesterday, if you recall, it triggered the uh, over voltage alarm and then powered the inverter off. So what we did was we discharged it using the AC. The AC was pulling about 1100 watts, yes? The AC was pulling about 1100 watts and then we discharged it, it dropped to 20, we took the load off and then it came back up to 25 and then we ran a drill on it and after 5 minutes the drill, um, the inverter powered down again. So today we've charged it, we saw 28.1 for the first time since we've been doing this and then the system powered down and then came back up again but there was a fault which was for me a positive compared to what we've done before and now what we're doing is we're going to do it we're going to discharge it one more time and we're discharging it using a drill unfortunately this will take us a week because this drill only pulls about 150 watts and we're going to run it till we discharge the batteries and then we're going to recharge it again something we found out our 60 amp BMS has serious limitations um, when we're pulling 1100 watts out of it, it got very hot. The manufacturer said I'm not supposed to pull more than 1200, 1300 watts. I'm not even convinced that I should be pulling 1100 watts from it over an extended period of time. So we'll continue to monitor that and see how that works out. But for what our clients use it for, the average 600 to 700 watts, it's really no big deal. So we're in a good place. Our balances have all turned green. A few earlier had the red lights on them. Now they're all green, which is pretty exciting, as you can see. I'm very, very excited. So we'll do um, one or two charge and discharge cycles before we roll them out onto the field. And then the next we'll do it with these as well. So thank you, thank you. Um, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions, please post them below. Um, if you've not subscribed, please click subscribe. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. Let me turn the drill on. Near the drill, and the drill is only pulling 100 and 